No, no. Uh, al, a loro? Per a loro. Sì, 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 sì. Sì, grazie. F4 Spanish Championship, round number two about to get underway. Race one, your grid on screen. Let's run through it in total. Philippe Ugran is going to be on pole position. Kaz Havercourt alongside Manny Boyer and Oliver Gerth, row two. Josh Dufek and Francesco Simonazzi will be row three. Then it will be Yassin Ferrati and Lorenzo Flutzer. Ivan Nozov and Lena Bula will be on row number five. Then just outside the top ten, Enrique Bordas and Javier Saclera. Zuleman Samfari and Vladimir Eriksson will form row seven. Row eight. Paul Adrian Palot and Agustin Collinot. Then it will be Enzo Juli and Carlos Martinez. Then Eloy Sebastian Lopez. And uh, behind that, just outside, or just rounding out the top 20, will be Mir Bod Shimali. And then Alejandro Garcia will round out the field. Formation lap underway at four Spanish Championship. This is round number two at Paul Ricard. Chris McCarthy here to call the action for you. Real pleasure to be here to talk you through the F4 Spanish Championship. A great series and already now into its second round for the 2020 season. Some brilliant names coming through this championship. Former champions uh, include the likes of Richard Vachort, Christian Lungard, who's now running third in the FIA F2 Championship. And Marie Cordiel won it in 2018. Franco Colapinto. Uh, won this championship last year. He currently leading the Formula Renault Euro Cup. Qualifying took place last lap. It was Philippe Ugran uh, who came away the best in that uh, qualifying session. Philippe Ugran, who did the last round of the championship last season and took podiums in all three races. Then the world number 11 in FIA karting, Kaz, Havers uh, Kaz Havercourt, will be alongside. Mari Boy, a quick start for him. New talent in two single-seaters, three-time Spanish karting champion. He's going to be on row number two with Oliver Gerth, the 15-year-old who did the last round of the championship last year, taking a 13th place finish. Look what that experience has done for him. Plenty of drivers out there, over 20 of them in total. We're about to go racing at the Paul Ricard circuit here for 20 minutes, uh, for 30 minutes, sorry, of action. There you go, green flag waves at the back. Lights are starting to come on. When they go out, we will be racing in the F4 Spanish Championship, and they're off away for 25 minutes. Oh, yellow flags. I think someone may have stalled it on the grid. Yeah, yes, you can see in the background there, already one of the drivers picking up a lot of damage. One driver struggling to get away as they now make their way down towards turn number one for the first time. What a shame that is. We may even see a safety car here. It's the number 11 and the number 13 who have been caught up in that. Unfortunately, the number 11, Enzo Juli, uh, unfortunately, uh, who has been caught up there. And another driver who has come almost to a stop. Uh, Joshua Dufek as well. Yeah, so MP car stalled and the other one clipped it. His rear left wheel actually came off entirely but it was following him along, so very safe stop there, and we do have the safety car. That could have been very nasty indeed, but the, the drivers acted very responsibly once they realised what happened. Yeah, it happened literally right in front of us, isn't it? Elliot Wood will be uh, alongside me as ever in the F4 Spanish Championship, and uh, a real shame to see two drivers already gone. So Josh Dufek, who qualified on the third row, just struggling to uh, get away, and uh, Enzo Juli was came and made contact, and there you can see the two MP Motorsport teammates who unfortunately will find themselves watching the rest of this race along with the rest of us. So safety car uh, is out. We have one of the cars actually just leaving uh, the pit lane. 
as well. So I'm not too sure uh, what happened with that car, but clearly there was another car who struggled to get going. And I think that's uh, Eloy Sebastian Lopez, the Mexican driver, now just going uh, out onto the circuit. So it's Ugran who's leading from Havercourt, Boya, Simonazzi, Girth, Fluxa, Ferrati, Nozov, Bula, Zagrera, Zanfari, Bordas, Colinon, Ericsson, Shemeli, Martinez, Garcia, Palo, and then the retired Dufek and Julie, and the recovering uh, Eloy Sebastian Lopez. We await for those cars to be recovered. Let's just talk a little bit more about some of the drivers in the field. I think they're probably going to come through the pit lane uh, because we have the two cars stranded on the pit straight. So the cars will come through the pit lane and then rejoin the circuit. But uh, cars are always coming to a halt here. Right, let's have a look at how this all happened. Delayed Josh Dufek was then clipped by teammate. I think there you can see it just in the background. One of the tyres almost completely disconnecting. And a real shame. This will give us a better look at it. Ah, there you can see. That was the moment Enzo Julie just spotted his teammate. So we're looking uh, on the third row. There you see Dufek on the third row in the, that uh, bright orange car. All the drivers getting out of the way. Unsighted Enzo Julie with a car in front of him. Nowhere to go. And goes straight into the back of Josh Dufek. And that's a real shame for Josh Dufek because he had a real good qualifying session. And on home soil, Enzo Gili will be really disappointed uh, to not be finishing the first race. Three races they're going to have in total. We'll have another qualifying session tomorrow as well. Fifth running this of the Spanish F4 Championship. MP Motorsport, who you saw there, they were champions from 2016 to 2018. Drivex School actually won the championship last year, the team's championship, for the, uh, for the first time. Talk through the field then. So, as we said, Philippe Ugran is your driver who is leading the way. Kaz have a court second. Uh, and then behind that, uh, in third place, uh, we have Mari Boyer. Mary Boyer, who we talked about uh, on the grid as the car's just being recovered there. Francesco Simonazzi is then going to be uh, in fourth place. The Italian driver who was due to start uh, in sixth place. Took part in a few rounds of the Italian F4 Championship last year, did Francesco. Oliver Girth next along. Oliver Girth, who we said did the last round of this championship last year. That uh, really did help. Lorenzo Fluxer is next along he started in eighth place actually took place in the took part in the uae f4 and championship over the winter took two wins and 11 podiums and that to go on and finish fourth in the championship so no stranger to the podium and he isn't far away from being there again next along after that is yasin ferrati the 16 year old swiss driver he's got uh, very good teammates around him as yasin ferrati in that gender motorsport team they weren't able to make the first round, so all of those drivers coming in a round down, uh, essentially. But uh, they're off to a good start with uh, Philippe Mugran there uh, on pole position and now leading the way uh, as well. So there you can see cars being recovered. To just talk about what happened at the first round, Kaz Havercourt uh, took the win in uh, all three uh, races uh, as drivers are now walking back to the pits. There you can see. So it was a Kaz Havercourt who took all three wins. The podium was then shared behind by the likes of Oliver Girth, Matty Boyer, Lorenzo Fluxer. Josh Dufek actually did take a podium uh, as well in the last race of the weekend. So Havercourt leads from Girth. Uh, Boyer is third in the standings. Fluxer fourth. Ericsson fifth. Collinon is sixth. And it's Dufek, Martinez, uh, Palot. And then Leno Bula, the only female driver in the field, currently rounding out the top 10. We're going to be behind the safety car for at least another lap, I have to say, because uh, the first car is being recovered. Uh, and uh, once that gets back, we'll have to get the other one recovered as well. So I think Elliot's going to be a good few more minutes behind this safety car before we go racing. Yeah, and it will help uh, drivers get used to what the track surface is like at the moment because we've had three qualifying sessions and a race already today. So a lot of rubber has been put down offline. Uh, no further action from the clash. And actually, we've got a second lorry uh, coming down the pit straight to pick up the second MP car. So things will be speeded up. We should be getting back to racing sooner rather than later. 
Well, the cars will once again come down the pit lane. You see a lot of rookies in the field, so the uh, battle for the, the rookie title is going to be pretty fierce. Points-wise, uh, pretty similar to what you've seen, something like Formula 1, 25 for the winner, 18 for second, 15 for third, 12 for fourth, 10 for fifth, and so on. Uh, however, race two, uh, there are less points up for grabs with 15 going uh, to the winner. Last year here, Giorgio Carrera actually won all three races, so whoever wins today will be the second ever winner in the Spanish F4 championship around here. It's Paul Ricard, the only time this championship actually goes outside of Spain. We started at Circuit de Navarra a few, uh, well, about a month ago now, back in July. Uh, and next, we will go to the Jerez circuit on the 19th and 20th of September as cars now coming back out of the pit lane. For this championship, a lot of drivers in it will, will either be in their second year of single-seater racing or just coming out of karting like Kaz Havercourt and Mary Boyer. They're just jumping out of karting, but a few drivers in here you know, have you know, dipped their toe in stuff like Italian F4, ADHC F4, French F4 even, and so on. Uh, so uh, it is a, a good starting point, isn't it? Yeah, uh, most most of the drivers here are rookies. The Tatus Formula 4 chassis is used in this championship as well as in Italy and Germany. So uh, every year we have Genza Motorsport coming in for this Paul Ricard round because they use it as a warm-up for their Italian campaign. Uh, obviously, they came in Giorgio Carrara, who is vastly experienced, hence he won every race last year uh, at this round. But they also had Johnny Edgar on his junior single season debut. And this weekend, they've obviously got Ugran and they've s signed Simonazzi, who normally races for another team in Italy. So that's what they're doing here. Then you have Drive It School, which kind of clues in the name. Uh, they bring up the drivers from karting in Spain uh, and give them that first step on the junior single seater ladder. Uh, then you also have squads like Global Racing Service, which is based almost maybe within walking distance of the Barcelona F1 circuit. Uh, and, and that's a new team which kind of evolved out of uh, another team that was once owned by Sauber F1 boss Manisha Kaltenborn. Uh, then we have uh, MP Motorsport, which comes all the way from the Netherlands, but obviously has a huge amount of experience in this championship and is why it's very popular. And as you mentioned with the F4 UAE drivers, we actually have a UAE team here with XL Motorsport, yes. which is probably the most successful team in kind of Middle Eastern karting. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, they, they've been doing F4 for a few years now, and I'm not sure if they're doing the full season. They did actually have Jamie Day testing uh, last week with them, but they have one car out today. So it's, it's great to see the variety this field has. Yeah, they've been the likes of uh, Paul Harley, Jake Dalton, Sean Bounton, I think it is, who run, runs that team, all hugely successful drivers, uh, particularly in karting, uh, back in the UK and on the world scene as well. Uh, so those guys just got the one driver, and that's going to make it a little bit difficult uh, for uh, Mobad there to uh, try and get some data to work with. But uh, gradually learning all the time, and that's what it's all about, just getting up to speed. Uh, he's jumping across to race in Europe for the first time, really. I know he did a uh, Rotax, World Fi Rotax Grand Final event a few years ago where he would have uh, come across to uh, Europe to represent his country. But uh, other than that, mostly done all of his racing in the Middle East, so this is going to be just a little bit different. Now, the second car in that instant has been put on the truck, and it is being uh, driven back now to a safe place. So I'd say we might have one more lap, and then that will be it. And this time, they're actually going to come down the start-finish straight once more. So we'll do a, just a quick full run-through then of the order. So Ugran, Havacourt, Boya, Simonazzi, Girth, Fluxa, Ferrati, Nozov, Bula, Sagrera, Zanfari, Bordas, Colinon, Ericsson, Martinez, Shameli, Garcia, and then Palo uh, and Eloy Lopez, who is going to be a lap down. Positions to the left of your screen there as uh, the lights on that safety car are going to go out very shortly and we will be away in racing. So 10 minutes have been knocked off the uh, race time and uh, that's going to be good news for Philippe Ugran. Sometimes that can make uh, drivers just uh, react, uh, just be a little bit more impatient than they usually would be as Ugran's almost overtaken the safety car there. He's going to have to try and slow down a little bit but that can change the mindset of a driver. When you've been behind the safety car for so long, it can lead to sometimes very impatient moves or uh, very easy mistakes as well. Yeah, but because of the uh, hot temperatures today, at least they won't have to worry about losing tyre temperature. That's the uh, one thing they can tick off the list. But other than that, yeah, it does, it does change the mindset. And with only 
13 minutes left on the clock now. They're now approaching it as a bit of a shorter race than was it what it was originally. Yeah, this is going to be a full-on sprint race to the line now. Ugran looks pretty keen to get going uh, with how he's trying to overtake the safety car. And it looks like there was a nose damage on one of the Genza cars there. Let's have a look. Uh, the blue car, ah. the third car in frame, I think. Let's have a look as he comes through. We need to have, a, say, a closer look at it. We haven't currently seen, but uh, it's something that will... Well, as we can see now, bottom of your picture, safety car coming in, but it's something that will uh, will be very noticeable as soon as we get going if it is front wing damage. No, it does just look like it's a decoration of the front nose, but a stark change in colour caught me out there. Safety <laughs> car is in this lap, though, so we will see racing underway. There we go. Ugran, have a court. Boyer, your top three in that order. And the field will now bunch up, and then we'll get ready to go racing. Here at Paul Ricard, it's going to be our first full lap of racing, really. We had the safety car board come out within a few corners last time, but uh, Philippe Ugrand is now going to control the pace as he comes round turn number 12, heading up towards 13, 14 and 15. When he puts his foot down, we will be away and racing. This is turn number 13 there, coming through now, so coming up to the last two corners. We need to try and get a good break here. Long back straight can lead to a, a chance to overtake, and Ugrand, that will certainly be on his mind now as he gets ready to get that foot down to the floor and get away and racing for round number two of the Spanish F4 Championship. And there he goes, he's gone for it, round turn number 14. Now hit the brakes through turn number 15 and onto the start, finish straight we go. It's Ugrand, Havacor, Boya, and then Simonazzi in that order now as they make their way down the start, finish straight. Green flag is waving in the Spanish F4 Championship. We've been stuck behind the safety car for around 14 minutes, but now we do go racing here at round number two. And it's been a good start there from Ugrand. He's brought three drivers with him as we have side by side in the background there. That's Gerd and Flukser going side by side for fifth place as they now come through the right-hander in the background. One of the drivers just running a little bit wide there as well. Down towards turn number three. Now we go for the first time of the restart. And so far, so good for your race leader, Simonazzi, just managing to hold on. But still side by side, our girth and flukes are in the background. Look like flukes are trying to drive down the inside. Yasin Florati and uh, Ivan Nozov as well. Also going side by side in the background. Ferrati, I think, just losing a place there as they come onto the back straight for the first time. And coming down back straight is obviously broken up by Chicane. It looks like one of the MP cars is heading out wide, breaking the toe to try and make move. Actually, that might be two cars at once. Gone past his teammate, looking at Ugran into the Chicane that breaks up the straight. Early on the brakes, the MP cars side by side, and they get through cleanly. That's going to help the Genza car behind them, as it looks like fifth place is also having a bit of a defensive battle through the exit of that Chicane. Yeah, the green car there, green livery car flukes are just having a, a little bit of trouble trying to hold off girth and so on. You can see him weaving in the background. The blue car there of Simonazzi just pulling out of the toe in fourth place as now they come through the flat out turn at number 10. This is the top four in your picture. Our flukes are there in the green livery car, the orange livery car that is girth and then Nozov there uh, just behind that as they now make their way up towards turn number 12 for the second time in racing mode. The first time even in racing mode, less than 10 minutes now remaining as we make our way through turn number 11. So the top four have broken away, uh, kind of equidistant as well. No real uh, imminent signs of a move there. This is where they are all queued up behind this. That's the number 64 of Mari Boya, always around the number 64 number even in his karting days, is now on to the start finish straight. We go just under 10 minutes plus a lap remaining in race number one. And drivers across the line, Ugran's got 0.476 second lead, but Kaz Havakor actually set the fastest lap there, but he's also under pressure from his MP Motorsport teammate, Mario Boy, as they come through the first corner. First two corners can be pretty easy. As the uh, little sweep after that is where an overtake could be made as it goes downhill. Yeah, and that's the little sweep that you're talking about as they pull left there to open up for a very quick entry into turn three, which really tightens up turn number four. This are your race leaders, Ugran, they're leading Havercourt and Boyer, two karting superstars, those guys last year. This is Nozov leading Ferrati, that battle we just had in our picture, Ferrati in the predominantly blue colours. Behind him uh, is uh, Javier Sagrera and then Lena Bula just behind that. 
It's a view now down the back straight as all the drivers making their way down towards turns eight and nine. Ugran leading Simonazzi in fourth place there. And the blue livery car just struggling to hold on to the top three now as they come through turns eight and nine. And if Simonazzi isn't careful, you can see actually just getting the car a little bit sideways. He's going to be caught by Fluke, sir, as we look back at battles a little bit further down the top ten. But the top three, the battle between them, far from over as we head towards the final eight minutes of this race. In the, just seeing in the background is Nozov that looks under pressure here coming through screen from Ferrati and Sagrera. And it's going to help, even though that Havercourt isn't in the lead here, that his main title rivals are further back because obviously we've got the guesting Genza Motorsport drivers in, Ugran and Simonazzi, both in the top four. So uh, this has got some pretty big points implications as well. But like you said, it's he, he could be called the race leader here with the Genza guys uh, guesting. Maybe you will know the Genza Motorsport team if you follow the likes of the FIA F3 Championship. As uh, now coming through picture here, battles a little bit further down the top ten. There's fourth place. This is fifth and sixth place. And then just behind that, that looks like a move with Ferrati diving down the inside of Ivan Nozov. Brilliant move there by Yasin Ferrati as they now come up towards the star finish straight to cross the line. This now lap number seven we go on to, and that was a great move, that from Yasin Ferrati. You can see in the background now behind that, that looks like a battle. That looks like Lena Bula uh, trying to get past uh, Javier Sagrera. Might be uh, Suleiman Zanfari involved in that as well. There's the number 52 of Suleiman Zanfari, the Moroccan driver, just trying to get past Lena Bula down the star finish straight. Wasn't quite able to get through. Not too far behind uh, Sanfari is Enrique Bordas and Ericsson as well. Car number 33, after investigation, no further action. So that was Carlos Martinez, who was having a little bit of a difficult race down the back of the field. And Cass Havercourt has set the fastest lap of the second lap in a row. He's just under a third of a second off the leader, but he's actually got his teammate again on his tail going down the long Minstrel straight. As Mary Boyer looks to the inside gun chicane, thinks better of it as it comes into entry. I think you have to break pretty early for that chicane, even though it's you know, a fairly high-speed corner. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's, it's a tricky one. If you go too fast into there, then you, you're going to damage yourself all the way down towards turn number 10. Uh, but uh, that is the, the risk you take as uh, in the background. You can see the queue forming there. I think that is behind uh, Ivan Nozov, the big queue behind. That's the number 54. You can see this is the leaders we are looking at now, the likes of Havercourt, and that is Mary Boyer now the, in, the, in your picture. I'd say Mary Boyer here is kind of waiting for Kaz Habercourt to do something about Philip Ugran. I'm not too sure if Mary Boy is in a big rush to get through, as there we can see in the background, that looks like uh, Gerth and Flukes are fighting away. Gerth trying to get through, wasn't quite able to get the move done. Lorenzo Flukes are under all kinds of pressure there. Behind that, Yasin Ferrati is closing in. He's the one to watch as he just goes through picture. This is Nozov versus Lena Bula for eighth place. Lenabula trying to dive down the inside into the last corner, locks up going in, not quite able to get the move done, but Nozov just holds on for the time being. Lenabula behind this, trying to make her way through as they head down the start finish straight. Lenabula is going to pull to the outside now in towards the first corner. We are going to go. Who is going to appear ahead out of these two? Lenabula has the racing line, but uh, on the inside is Nozov. And, but for the time being, Lenabula is going to have to stay behind. So she's going to have to wait for that back straight. Behind that is the likes of Sam Fardy, Seglera, Ericsson, and also Enrique Bordas joining the party there as well. Yeah, and our top three battle is getting ever closer. We've got seven temps covering the top three now, and just 0.3 seconds between Ugra and Havercourt. Boy has only got half of the points of Havercourt after just three races in this series. And if he wants to fight his teammate for the title, he's going to have to make a move here. We've only got four and a half minutes. That's maybe three laps at most, and with maybe only two overtaking opportunities on each of those laps. He's got to make it count now. Well, you can see Havercourt looking in the mirrors, and there goes Havercourt to defend into the turn eight. Nice chicane we go. So Havercourt has decided he wants to try and stick, stick for a second here. To the chicane, they go. This is Ivan Nozov uh, still battling away with Lena Bula, who's becoming more and more impatient. Uh, second and third place battle just uh, coming through our picture there. It's Boyer behind Kaz Havercourt. Boyer now making the first attempt. Havercourt deciding he's going to go defensive here as they come through the long right-hander at turn number 11. 
Matty Boyer trying to find a way through. We could see a move maybe into the last corner. This is turn number 12. They're coming into very easy to defend through there. But as they make their way towards the last corner, I think this is where we might see an attempt from Mary Boyer as they come up to this left-hander now. This is where you've got to knock off speed to open up the start finish straight. But Mary Boyer might try and carry more here to get the run. But Kaz have a court wise to it. Defends going into the final corner. Down the start finish straight. Now this will be to complete lap number eight. Oh dear. Now, who is that that has gone off in the barriers? That's Lena Bula. Okay, well, she was in the battle there with Ivan Nozov. Now, is, Eisen, is Ivan Nozov appeared okay as well? Let's have a look as they come through. I'm just trying to see if Nozov doesn't appear to be tumbling down the order. So, Nozov is still eighth. Oh, dear. Big, big crash, that one. Lena Bula going up and over completely. And let's hope that she is OK, but that a big, big accident. And that will surely be the end of the race. Let's have one more look at it. Oh, dear. And that's where Lena Bula went up and over. And it wasn't even Isaac, Ivan Nozov that was involved in that. He was ahead. I wouldn't like to say who that was because I don't know for certainty, but driver trying to come down the inside and just caught the back. And there's Lena Bula just explaining what happened. I'm sure we'll see another look at it, but the main thing is there, Elliot, really, that Lena Bula is out the car and OK, and that just goes to show the safety of these cars. But a, a big, big crash. And for now, we're going to carry on racing. Yeah, I think it was one of her teammates. It looked like a, an FA Racing Fernando Alonso liveried car, and that's what uh, two of the DriveX cars are liveried as this season, as uh, one of the cars comes under pressure in front of Pincher. Looks like Ugrand's got this in the bag now. He set the fastest lap on the previous lap, a 1.275 second lead now. And we've got 1 minute 40, so they're going to complete this lap, possibly another lap, and then the regulation lap as well. So we may still have three laps here. Boy, it could make a move. And we haven't had the safety car either uh, from the bullet crash, because obviously there's a lot of runoff here at Paul Ricard, and they can safely extract the car very quickly. That's why it's known as the safest track in the world. It was at turn 12 where it happened. As you said, one of those driving cars just trying to put their nose down the inside. And oh, there's a, a lock up there uh, from the number 96 of Oliver Girth. Oliver Girth, who's caught Simonazzi now. So Simonazzi was part of that lead four, slowly has been dropping away, and now he's going to have to find himself defending, as is uh, Yassin Ferrati, who we see in picture here. Yassin Ferrati just diving to the inside. The green livery car of Lorenzo Flukes are now looking to the outside there as they come through turns one and two. Flukes versus Ferrati on a hand in the air there from Flukes. Not happy at all. I think uh, he's trying to claim to himself that uh, Yassin Ferrati is weaving there. You can only, of course, make your one defensive move, and that's it. And it does make it difficult that it is actually a sweep of a corner, so it isn't a straight line. So how you define a weave on that kind of straight, which isn't quite straight, is, is very difficult. <laughs> and that's a conversation for another time, isn't it? I'm sure that's uh, the driver's chatting a lot. But uh, last lap is confirmed. This will be now the last lap as they head up towards turns eight and nine. Ugran is your leader. Then there is second and third. The two teammates have Havacourt and Boyer. And then there is the battle going on between uh, Girth and Simonazzi, and this behind Flukser on the outside here. The uh, blue car there just having to defend, that is Yassin Ferrati. But uh, so far, all has been good for your race leader as now they're making their way up towards turn number 10 in the background. A huge key forming there uh, behind. But this is the Ferrati battle now coming through picture. And that is Lorenzo Fluxer going through, is it? So uh, uh, Fluxer now going past us, just running a little bit wide in the background there. That was uh, Yasin Ferrati. So that will be a change for sixth place. We've just been told the incident involving cars 85 and 15, so that's Lena Buller and Valdemar Eriksson, uh, drive it school teammate. Uh, so yes. I believe he'll probably get a penalty for that, sticking his nose in a little too late into the corner. Yeah, well, no, that was the drive X teammate who was confirmed. We'd have liked to have a guess beforehand, but uh, coming on to the start finish straight, we are, and it is going to be the last lap now this time. That is the clock 
now strike zero, so one more lap will be remaining. Ugrant, Havercourt and Boyer, your top three. Doesn't look like there's going to be any changes there. Simonazzi versus Girth in picture now coming through the left-hander, who's going to appear in fourth place. Simonazzi has held that position for a long time, but there's Girth who is trying to make his way through. In the background, Flukser now has got past Ferrati and has been able to extend a gap. Then it's Nozov in eighth, Sagvera ninth, and Ericsson, who is under investigation, is in tenth place. But this is your main battle to watch on the final lap. It is for fourth place, Simonazzi versus Oliver Girth. Oliver Girth, who has been keeping himself very busy on the esports scene throughout lockdown. It seems to have worked because he so far has been pretty impressive in this race. He fights for fourth place with Simonazzi as they make their way down the back straight for the final time. Have a call. This good news for him. This is uh, your leader, Philippe Ugrand, the Genza Motorsport driver. But behind this, Ugr have a call. This is good news because Genza Motorsport guesting at this round. They will not compete throughout the rest of the season or are not due to. So for Havercourt and his championship hopes, this has been a pretty perfect race. Full time 10 for the last time comes Philly Ugnan. A really impressive drive from Philly, the Romanian driver. It's just his second year in single seater racing. Did a couple of races in this last year along with the likes of AVAC and Italian and F4, but did the last round last year. run of podium finishes in the Spanish F4 Championship as through the penultimate corner he comes Philippe Ugran there now it looks like he's starting to have a little bit of fun with it the Genza Motorsport driver out of the final corner and race one victory here at Paul Ricard is going to go to Philippe Ugran he comes across the line to take the win and behind two MP Motorsport cars on the podium Kaz Havercourt your championship leader finishes in second Mary Boyer third and it was a very hard for fourth place for Genza's Francesco Simonazzi. Oliver Girth behind, tried everything he could, but he makes it three MP cars in the top five. Yassin Ferrati, a good race for him. He gains a place to finish in six. Lorenzo Fluxa is then next along. Likewise, he gaining up a place to finish in seventh. Nozov finishes in eighth place. Javier Sagrera in ninth place. Valdemar Eriksson under investigation, but provisionally will be tenth. Enrique Bordas just outside the top ten. Then it was Suleiman Zemfari, uh, who we saw battling away for top ten positions. He finishes in twelfth place. Agostin Colin on, on home soil is thirteenth. Likewise, Paul Adrian Palot in fourteenth. Behind that, Alejandro Garcia. Merbod Chameli gained a good few positions there, up from twentieth to sixteenth. Carlos Martinez will be disappointed with 17th problems before the start of the race mean Eloy Sebastian Lopez finishes a lap down in 18th place. Lena Bula, who we saw have that huge crash on lap number eight, flipping over. Thankfully, she walked away from it, albeit frustrated, but she will be classified in 19th place. And then after that big incident at the start of the race with Josh Dufek being clattered into by Enzo Julie after he struggled to get going from the line, those two, unfortunately, two of three retirees from the race. And Kaz Havercourt is now on 83 points after four races. Second place will be Oliver Go from 55. We've already got Philip Ugran up at fifth place in the standings at 25 points. Uh, and he's only done a quarter of the season, technically. Not bad, is it? Not not a bad start to the season. There is Ukran there. He's been congratulated by some of his teammates. Three races take place in total over the weekend in Spanish F4. And two more of them will be tomorrow. That's the action completed in the F4 Spanish Championship for today. But after another qualifying session, first thing tomorrow, uh, they will also be racing twice tomorrow afternoon at 50 minutes past one local time here in France and then they will be the last race of the weekend in Paul Ricard, 25 minutes past six. That the longest race they do, 25 minute race with the other two, uh, 18 minutes plus a lap. So the feature race, uh, if you like, the championship this weekend won by Philippe Ugrand who now makes his way back into the pit lane. Driver in the number 14. Well, a pretty good race. Fortunately, the first 10 minutes of it were spent behind the safety car after that big accident uh, at the start. And then uh, another big accident followed, unfortunately, with Lena Bula, but she 
thankfully was able to walk away from that incident. But uh, coming through all of that unscathed and in the lead of the race, it was a Leicester flag win for Philippe Ugran. Dominated the race, controlled things from the front, even after having to deal with that long safety car period. And he'll be absolutely delighted with that one. Job done, win in the bag for him. With the kind of pace he has, he'll be looking to get two more, I'm sure, and continue this trend of Genza winning all three races. He's the second ever winner here at Paul Ricard in the F4 Spanish Championship after we made our first visit here last season. And Genza unbeaten round here so far. So it's a happy place for them. It's the only round we do outside of Spain. So a chance for some drivers to uh, pick up a victory who maybe aren't used to racing within uh, Spain. Just a handful of drivers. It is a very uh, international grid. We've got uh, 11 different nations represented. Drivers coming from all over to the race here. But let's have a look at some of the highlights then. This is when the race got underway from row three. Josh Dufek's job was to get going off the line. An unsighted Enzo Shuli just saw him too late, unfortunately, and clattered straight into him. And that would bring out the safety car. Out front, Philippe Ugran did hold on to his lead. And from there, the safety car would come straight out and the race would be neutralized while the instant in the background would be cleared up as in second and third were the likes of Kat Havocal and Manny Boyer who had to fight pretty hard for that third place early on we saw coming through in turns three, four and five. Those were the stranded cars, safety car as we said would be out whilst the likes of Enzo Juli and Josh Dufek made their way back to the pits but then with just under 15 minutes to go the green flag waved once again and Philip Ugran would lead us off away from the start behind. You can see Kaz Havocal and Manny Boyer fighting away. Changes just in the background with the likes of Lorenzo Fluxer trying to make moves. This was the moment the MP Motorsport drivers went side by side with Havacol there on the inside. Boyer to the outside. Francesco Simonazzi at that point fancied his chances, but he would soon drop back into the path of Oliver Gerth. This was the big incident towards the end of the race. Lena Bula unfortunately being tagged there by Valdemar Eriksson. She went up and over. Thankfully, she was OK. No need for a safety car either. But out front, it would be Philip Ugran who would lead the way and take the race win, the first race win of the weekend in the F4 Spanish Championship. Havacol and Boyer would round out your podium with Simonazzi, Gerth, Ferrati, Fluxa, Nozov, Sagrera and Eriksson rounding out the top ten. Good job. Yeah, good job. Well, that is the first race of the weekend completed. Two more to come tomorrow. We'll have a second qualifying session tomorrow, which will be at 9 o'clock local time here at Paul Ricard. And then race two, 50 minutes past one. And race number three will be at 25 minutes past six. Hope you enjoyed all the action in that one. There was plenty of overtaking, wasn't there? There was plenty of drama as well. I'm sure more than enough to keep you all entertained. So uh, thank you very much for tuning in with us for this race. More Spanish F4 coming up tomorrow here from Paul Ricard.